Hey guys, I'm Mark Allen, BH Spring Solutions LLC and BHSpringSolutions.com. This is another session of High Power University. Um, earlier this year, just recently actually, um, right now is the mid-November of 2020, and um, my partner Slav Baruchiev, who lives in uh, Slivan, Bulgaria, um, switched his carry regimen, and he's done some videos about this, they're very good. Um, about his conversion over to a 1911 in Bulgaria and why. Um, and I thought it was a extremely good rationale for a reason for doing so. Um, and you should watch that. But um, our basically the gist of it uh, for him was he has a couple of factors in Bulgaria that we don't really have so much in the United States and a couple of those being um, Expanding ammunition, hollow point ammunition, which we know in the United States is safer. In other words, you know, if you have to stop an attack, we don't believe that there's a, a, a reason to kill the neighbor's dog, you know, four apartments down, um, which is what a solid, you know, ammunition or solid bullet can do. It can go through walls, um, it can go through multiple people, of course. Um, and we know that hollow point ammunition is, is safer and uh, more, more uh, conclusive in terms of its lethality. And anyway, um, and the other thing that he was talking about was in, in uh, Bulgaria, there's um, a difference in the way the courts and the laws look at the use of lethal force in order to stop an attack. In other words, you may be justified. Um, however, if you require seven rounds, to stop an attack, um, you face the possibility um, of, you know, the shooting being justified, but then you could be on the hook in a bad way because of using excessive force. And we here in the United States look at it differently in that, you know, we look at it as anything worth shooting is worth shooting a lot. And we don't worry so much about this, you know, business of, you know, if somebody comes in my door and I have to stop that attack and it takes the whole magazine. Um, we don't worry so much about, you know, the notion that, you know, questioning, you know, well, why did I have to shoot the guy, you know, 10 times? Um, other places, you know, that's a consideration. And in that consideration, you know, my partner rationalized that the, uh, switching over his uh, personal defense handgun to a 1911 was a rational, justified thing. I could not agree more. And I, I don't think that he could have made a, a better choice in his instance. Um, after 30 years of carrying the same high-power pistol, which um, has absolutely not one internal part in it that it was originally built with, it's got about 30,000 rounds through it now, but uh, it has all BH uh, parts optimization springs um, and you know, every pin and, and uh, you know, other part that uh, BA Spring Solutions does not yet produce has been replaced you know, at one time or another. Um, but this handgun, this frame and slide, has about 30,000 rounds through it and, um, and 30 years of service. For me, and um, uh, this is still going to be, continue to be a carried handgun you know, in my regimen. However, it's going to take a subordinate role um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in always having a backup plan if you can, and that's the reason why I'm a big advocate of, in my case of carrying two high powers and not one, one as a backup. Um, but the things that have happened this year have gotten me thinking a little deeper, I think, a little um, differently. And um, one of the things that I have leaned towards that I wanted to share with you is the use of a 40 Smith & Wesson high power. Um, traditionally, for about three months out of the year here in Indiana, I have switched over to 1911s because um, the nine millimeter round in an expanding ammunition, um, we are told tends to load up with clothing and even bad guys wear layers and layers, you know, when it's zero or sub-zero outside, which it gets here sometime. Um, uh, my goodness, it's not been that many years ago, eight years ago, I think, here in Indiana, around the 15th of December, uh, we stopped seeing above freezing temperatures, and we didn't see an above freezing temperature until the middle of March, and um, it, it was it was no kidding cold, 
And, you know, that particular year I carried a 45, you know, until, until spring, you know, uh, longer than uh, my traditional. But uh, this year I've kind of, I've kind of changed my mind and changed that up a little bit. And this is kind of um, also the uh, beginning of the 30 year retirement party for my uh, carry high power that I've had and used for so long. I'm uh, uh, replacing it as a, a primary handgun for me with this 40 Smith & Wesson high power. And I'm going to explain to you just a little bit why I've made that decision. Um, I do believe the 40 Smith & Wesson round in expanding ammunition is very sufficient for layers and layers of clothing. It does not load up like the 9mm does. Um, so it answers that. Uh, it gives me a chance to continue carrying a high power in the winter months. Um, and BH Spring Solutions has um, uh, now available a conversion kit. So just to give you an idea, here's my box with uh, this 40 Smith & Wesson High Power. Um, it actually has the original um, owner's manual, uh, FN Erstall HP SFS 40 Smith & Wesson pistol. Now the significance of this is this is one of 5,000 handguns that was made by FN in 2003 and 2004 using the RDIH SFS components. And uh, that's what this has in it. The slide stop has uh, RDIH inscribed here. These, this is the same SFS system that BH Spring Solutions markets today at bhspringsolutions.com. Um, FN in uh, Belgium used this system in its exact same configuration uh, that, that we market this product today in their new production high powers. So the SFS system or fast safety system um, at BH Spring Solutions, this is, an, a, this is an original or an OEM operating system um, you know, in every sense of the word. And um, there was even an owner's manual created by FN for this specific handgun. Um, it, it makes some great points uh, about the uh, system. Um, the tested cartridges package uh, in this package where it says um, model, um, it, it says uh, HP Vigilante SFS um, and then caliber 40 Smith & Wesson of course. Um, but that's the, the, several reasons why we picked up this why we picked up this particular handgun. The fact that it is the original SFS from the factory that was one uh, reason. And um, of course, I've had this entire handgun detail stripped at this point. I've inspected and checked everything. One of the interesting things that's that's particularly interesting, I think, is this is a seven, at least a 17-year-old system. Uh, the manufacturer date, according to the barrel, is 2003. And um, there is no need at this point to replace mainspring, return spring, um, uh, or the cocking lever springs. Um, they are uh, working, as you can see, very, very decisively. Um, and uh, this handgun has now been test fired for a couple hundred rounds, no malfunctions whatsoever. Um, and uh, uh, the fact that we can convert this high power, that is the thing that has, that has transitioned me over to this high power as, uh, we're gonna say, the workhorse in my stable, so to say. Um, in the uh, box uh, for my 40 Smith & Wesson, um, I've got two 9mm magazines, a VH Spring Solutions Advanced uh, Barrel for High Power Pistols uh, in 9mm. I've tested uh, this pistol in 9mm. Uh, our 15 pound recoil spring is optimal. Um, we also have created a kit that is a nine, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson to 9mm um, dual caliber conversion kit. In other words, it converts your 40 Smith & Wesson to a dual caliber handgun. In order to do that, I need to replace out the extractor. That will have taken some fitting and we've made a video that shows you just exactly how to do that. Very simple. And a couple of pin punches in order to do that uh, change out. And literally within what, 
two and a half minutes, I can convert this 40 over to a nine millimeter tuned for a nine millimeter and uh, then use it. And most likely in the summer months, I'm gonna convert this over to a nine millimeter. I'm gonna carry it with a 15 round Metgar magazine with one in the pipe for 16 rounds. Um, the magazines uh, that were all made for the 40 Smith & Wesson are 10 rounds, so I can carry 11 rounds in the winter time with this. Um, and we're going to be making another video uh, about the subject of stopping power. Um, and, and, and that's going to um, extend the conversation, so to say, about um, this whole question of stopping power and time of year and climate. and and uh and those uh choices and is it better to have a smaller caliber with a more capacity or a, a larger caliber with possibly less capacity it's a it's a subject and we're going to kind of uh, address that but um the 40 smith and wesson to nine millimeter dual caliber conversion kit um at bh spring solutions um for owners of 40 Smith & Wesson High Powers. Um, we believe this kit adds a new dimension of ownership because uh, it makes it very, very easy to transition from 40 to 9 millimeters. So if you're going to the range, um, as we're making this video today, ammunition is extremely scarce everywhere. And, you know, you go to the range and this gives you an option, you know, based on availability of ammunition, um, based on, you know, time of year, based on uh, you know, whatever you you would require that kind of choice for, um, this just expands your capabilities, and I've just found it irresistible. Um, the 40 Smith & Wesson uh, high power, especially with the VH Spring Solutions recoil buffering, um, recoil spring guide rod, um, and VH Spring Solution springs, um, we're ejecting empty brass about seven to eight feet away from the handgun. We convert over to nine millimeter and with a 15 pound recoil spring, we're ejecting empty brass about seven to eight feet from the handgun, both using the buffering recoil spring guide rod. What that means is, is this handgun is behaving um, uh, from a tactical or performance standpoint, what the shooter is feeling, it's behaving approximately the same for either caliber so, in other words, what we're doing is you go down to 9 millimeter, you have a lighter recoil spring, you have the same extraction distance, that means the slide velocity is approximately the same regardless of its, if it's 40 Smith & Wesson caliber or 9 millimeter. You're not going to notice an appreciable difference in recoil or kick, if you will, some people call it. Um, you're not going to notice an appreciable difference when you transition from one caliber to another. It, that is, um, uh, you know, when I transition, you know, yearly from a high power to a 1911, I usually have to spend a little bit of time acclimating myself to the different trigger pull. This solves that for me. Um, I can use the same handgun um, year-round in what I believe is the optimal configuration for the circumstances and for the environment, for the time of year, for the weather. Um, specifically, you know, uh, considering that uh, an attack that comes when it's 10 below zero usually comes from uh, a direction of somebody who's wearing, you know, four or five layers of clothing. If you stop that attack, you got to take that into account. You got to get through that. So, um, from every standpoint, from a tactical standpoint, from an options standpoint, um, this is a a uh, there's no downsides for me about this. Um, from the investment standpoint, um, we all have seen what has been going on with the values of high powers and where they're going and have been going and are still going. Um, and it's, you know, if you own a lot of high powers, it's impressive. If you don't own a lot of high powers, it uh, can be a little intimidating. Um, this uh, is a way for a 40 Smith & Wesson high power owner to expand uh, or enhance their investment portfolio, if you will, uh, when it comes to high powers because we believe it's a great probability that in the resale market today, a 40 Smith & Wesson high, cal uh, high power or a high power that is a dual caliber tuned for two different calibers, 
Um, this is a rarity and uh, we believe it probably would command premium kind of uh, return uh, in a you know online auction market or you know wherever it would be sold. So um, that's it for this presentation. I'm Mark Allen, BH Spring Solutions LLC and BHSpringSolutions.com. Thanks for watching.